All right, Richie Jacobs has a great question here in his comment. He says, help me understand James 2 verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, though man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Question mark. In light of Ephesians 2 verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. All right, so this is a great question. Um, and uh, so I want you to understand this, and I don't want anybody to be confused about it. And I always have this thing where if there's any slight misunderstanding, if there's not a total grasp on what it is saying, I will read it. And then I'll read it again, and I'll keep reading it until I get it. Now, I won't read it you know all day and all night but I'll read it today I'll read it tomorrow I'll read it the next day until I get it you know as much as I'm thinking about it I'll read it at least once a day in fact I would like for example this I would read the whole book of James and um, until you know you get a clear understanding of what it's talking about um, typically if you have any doubts about or you know any lack of understanding typically that's because you haven't read it enough and uh, that's true for me so I'll read it and I'll read it and I'll read it again alright so that's what I want to do I want to sort of go over just the first two chapters or the yeah the first two chapters of James and then just sort of walk through what that particular verse is talking about and what that particular chapter is talking about okay so James a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad greeting my brethren count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations knowing this that the trying of your faith works patience but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire and wanting nothing if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and abradeth not and it shall be given him but let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perishes. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. <clears throat> Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempts he any man. But every man is tempted, when he is drawn away from his own lust and enticed. Then, when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, 
slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man works not the righteousness of God. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which he is able to save your souls. But be ye not be I'm sorry, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholds himself and goes his way, and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. But whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Now, if you look at somebody who is a rich man with admiration and the poor man with disgust, then you're in violation of this. All right, if you look at the cool kid with admiration and the weirdo with disrespect, you're in violation. Right? If you look differently at the virgin than you do at the tramp, you're in violation of this. We ought to look at everybody and love everybody the same without respect of persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and in goodly apparel and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment and you have respect of him that wears the gay clothing and say unto him sit thou here in a good place and say to the poor stand thou there or sit here under my footstool are you not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts hearken my beloved br brethren has not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself ye do well but if you have respect persons you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point he is guilty of all for he that said do not commit adultery said also do not kill now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they, or yeah, I'm sorry, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. All right. So that's like you know, if you're gonna have respect to persons, you're gonna look at one person higher than another person. You're guilty of the whole law. Just like if you don't commit adultery but you kill, you're, you're guilty of the whole law. Same thing. What does it profit, my brethren? I'm sorry, am I in the right place here? For he shall have judgment without mercy that has showed no mercy. And mercy rejoice against judgment. Let me repeat that. For he shall have judgment without mercy that has showed no mercy and 
Mercy rejoice against judgment. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Nothing. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. Yeah, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seeth thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? Question mark. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Now you remember how in Luke, uh, how Jesus, um, let me put it this way. When Jesus, he said to the woman, thy faith has saved thee, go in peace. And then in Luke 18, and Jesus said unto him, the blind guy, receive thy sight. Thy faith has saved thee. Now think about this. What work did the woman do in Luke 7? It's not the work that she did. It's the work that he did. It's the work that Jesus did. Right, so also in Luke 18. It, the blind guy, he didn't do anything. It was the work that Jesus did. And because the blind guy and because the woman had faith, their faith saved thee. So let's go back to James 2. Think about Abraham. All right. Seeth thou how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect. It's not your works that has made faith perfect. It is by the work that God has worked right so you think about how Abraham was justified by his works well he wouldn't have offered his son had he not had faith because he had faith he believed God and therefore he was going to offer his son upon the altar but instead God offers his son upon the altar and by believing in him, by having faith in him and the works that God has done, faith is made perfect. All right, and we see like, for example, in Romans 4, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. It's because of the faith of Abraham that he was doing the work so also our works is in, should be in accordance to our faith. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all and the scripture was fulfilled which saith Abraham believed God and it was imputed on him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only so without the works the faith is vain so there was works done for us now we can put our faith in the works 
that God has worked for us, and so also ought our works be reflective of our faith. Likewise, um, likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. And Rahab also another great story. Um, how she had, she was in the midst of all these wicked people, but she had faith. And because she had faith, because she hid the messengers and uh, helped them because she had faith. She did the works because she had faith. And God has done the works for us, and we put our faith in His works. So also should our faith, or I'm sorry, so also should our works be reflective of our faith. All right, so this is what James is talking about. Now, people that say that you have to have works to be saved are completely not understanding James 2 at all. All right, this is just simp to put it simply, your works ought to be representative of your faith, but nobody is saved because of their works. The work has already been done for us to be saved. Right? And so that's I'm just guessing here because you added Ephesians 2 for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast so this is not a contradiction to, to James 2 at all all right James 2 James when he's speaking of works he he's simply just talking about your works being reflective of your faith and how important the works are and not just to have faith okay it's not it's not complicated at all but so I want to go back and then I'll end it I want to go back to the very first chapter you remember when I was reading here and it says right here in verse 5 if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not and it shall be given him if you lack wisdom ask God but last but let him ask in faith nothing wavering do not waver in your faith do not waver in your confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ that he has saved you don't waver in that at all don't diminish your faith don't diminish your trust in the Lord do not waver from doctrine to doctrine trust the scripture trust the gospel the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ that he has saved you forever and ever you are sealed sanctified secure forever do not waver in that for he that wavers is like a wave of sea driven with the wind and tossed for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways do not be unstable do not be wavering do not waver you can have complete 100 percent confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ that he has saved you in James 2 it's just simply talking about letting your works be reflective of your faith trust God and help others when you can when the opportunity is there right that's all there's nothing uh, confusing or complicated about it. It's not rocket science. It's very simple. Trust God.
Thanks, Richie. Appreciate the question.